Hey everyone, it's John Gallant. Today I'm gonna to talk about Project Tie, the new project from the .NET team to help you dev, debug, and deploy your microservices applications to a Kubernetes cluster, such as the Azure Kubernetes service. The application that we're gonna be looking at is called Memealizer. It's an app that I've been building over the last couple months to show off the new Azure SDKs, which I'll leave a link to in the description. It takes in a meme, extracts the text from the meme, it analyzes the sentiment of that text and then changes the border color of that image based on the sentiment. So red is gonna be negative, green is gonna be positive, and yellow is neutral. You can add a meme by clicking on this plus sign, or you can click the infinity icon to automatically stream new memes in every five seconds. All of this code can be found on GitHub at github.com slash johngio slash memealizer. Let's spend a few minutes talking about the memealizer architecture. At the very front end, you have the Blazor WebAssembly web app. This is a standalone web app. You have an ASP.NET Core API. You have a .NET Core service, as well as an Azure function. Those are all the components that I build and ship as part of my microservices solution. All of the other boxes here are Azure services. When you click that plus sign, it's gonna post an image to the API, and then it's going to add that image to blob storage. It's gonna add a message to the underlying message subsystem, and you can configure that using the messaging provider here. You can choose Q storage or service bus. And then our service is going to receive those messages. It's going to use the cognitive services APIs to extract the text, get the sentiment, then it's gonna save a document to the persistent store and you can choose which one you wanna use, either Cosmos or Table Storage. After that, we are going to add a sentiment message, number eight there. It's gonna to add to service bus or queue service again. Azure Functions is gonna listen on that queue and then signal our service is gonna be triggered to update the sentiment in the UI. These boxes down here are app configuration and key vault. We use app config to set the border style so we can change it to dashed or solid. And then in key vault, we store all of our other secrets. So that's the architecture in a nutshell. Now let's look at the code. Okay, now I'm in VS Code and I've opened my workspace for Memealizer. Now let's take a look at Memealizer code. So this is what you'll see when you clone the repository in GitHub. You have assets, you have IAC. IAC is all the Terraform scripts that we use to deploy our assets to Azure. And we have PAC, that's platform as code. And it has the old stuff. Before I started to use Thai, I used Docker, I used Kubectl, I used Scaffold. It has the Thai folder, it has all the Thai scripts that you need. And I have some generic scripts there that I use when I'm running my other scripts. And then it has the source, okay? So that's .NET Python source. And right now we're focused on .NET. And it has API lib, lib model services, which has the functions project and the queue service, as well as the web app. We also have the workspace file. So if you're gonna open this in VS Code, just go right to that workspace file and open that. And then we have the .env files. This .env file is what we're gonna use when we run locally in our dev environment. Really the only setting that you need to change is the base name. All the other settings are gonna be inherited from that one setting. Okay, and so we don't have any secrets in here. It's just kind of application or, or environment specific settings. Okay, and then we have one for prod, which has a different name. And we have one for staging, which has a different name. And some of the URLs are different as well. Now, because this folder structure is so deep, what I wanted to do in my workspace is just put everything as top level folders here. So let's take a look at that. We have the API which is our .NET API. We have our library, which is just a C-sharp uh, library class. We have a library model, which has only our libraries in it. We have the functions project. We have the queue service, the web app, and we also have the Terraform folder, the Thai folder, and the Docker folder. All right, so let's jump right into the Thai folder, okay? You'll notice here that I have some files down here. Let's just jump right to the Thai template and Thai YAML files. Now, the reason I have two is because Thai doesn't currently do environment variable replacement in the Thai YAML file, which I need, okay? So for example, in my Thai template file, I have this registry setting here, and it points to the Azure Container Registry server, which is pulled from my .env file. So remember here, inside of Memealizer, we have .env, I have my registry server here, and it has that base name, um, ACR, and so on. 
Now, the other thing is that Ty currently doesn't support um, environment variable replacement in EMV files. Um, and so what I have to do is co also copy that EMV file here to the root of the Ty project folder so that it finds that. So environment variable replacement is not there. This is a good way, a good workaround to do that. In my Ty YAML, I have an example here on how to do Azureite. I have the web app. I have the API. I have the function and I have the queue service. And then I have ingress. So ingress is a way for you to tell Kubernetes when I get a request at this path, I want you to pass it to this particular service. So the root path is just going to go to the web app slash images is going to go to the API. Image is going to go to the API. Config is going to go to the API and image hub is going to go to the API. Now you might be wondering why am I repeating this here? Because Kubernetes supports regular expressions. Ty unfortunately does not support regular expressions in ingress yet, but there's an issue on that. Um, and then we have this API negotiate. So I'm actually running my Azure function off ingress as well, which is currently supported locally, but not in production. You'll see how I get around that. So that's my ingress from dev. When I'm running locally, I'm gonna use this ingress and my ingress for production is a little bit different. Uh, this is the same, image is the same, image is the same, configs the same, image hub is the same, but functions is not there because we do not currently support external services such as an app service in ingress. That is something that's being worked on. So you'll notice here tag staging in prod and then uh, for dev, we have tags of dev. You also notice up here that we have tags as well. So I'm only running Azureite in dev. I am running everything here. Uh, I am running the web app in all three environments. I'm running all three and the Azure function is just in dev because in production and staging, I'm deploying that to a different app service, which I'll talk about later and how I do that. So that's my Thai template.yaml. Now when I run my script, it is going to generate Thai YAML. Okay, this has everything filled out. All of my environment variables are pushed to this file. And when I run Thai, it's gonna run using this file. Now let's talk about the Thai run command. This is the command that will look at your Thai YAML file and instantiate all these services, open all the ports, get everything running for you, okay? So what I do is I have a run.sh file here where I'm setting the root here. This basically just says from this location, how many steps above this till I get to the project root. And then I'm gonna execute this base.sh file, okay? Let's take a look at what that does. So it's in root scripts base.sh. So in memoizer scripts base.sh, okay? That's gonna parse the args. It's gonna load the environment, that .env file, and it's gonna generate my app settings file. So parse args, let's take a look at that. That's basically gonna look at the first argument that is passed to the run.sh file. And it's gonna say, okay, so we have no arguments or it's dev. Let's use .env and set the workspace for Terraform to dev. And if it's not dev or blank, it's going to append that name to the .NET file name and to the workspace. And then inside my load in the sh file, I'm basically loading all the environment variables into the current session for that script execution. Back to my tie run sh file, I'm then gonna call this gen files sh. Okay, so gen files, this is in my tie folder here. That's gonna generate my tie YAML file here. It's gonna do all of our environment variable replacements. And then it's going to generate the .env file that I use as well. Like I said, tie doesn't support environment variable replacements. This is how I get around it today. And then I'm gonna call tie run dash dash logs. We'll put everything to the console dash v debug is going to have more logs outputted to the console to help you debug watch dash dash watch is going to watch all of my project files rebuild and redeploy uh, when uh, files are changed and then dash dash tags says i'm only going to use the tie resources that have been tagged with whatever workspace i'm using so i'm going to right click on my tie folder here and say open in integrated terminal and then i'm just going to do run.sh I could do dev, but that is the default. If I wanted to use what's in the staging EMV file, I could do staging or prod. And that's gonna pull whatever .env file you specify. So let's just run that. It's gonna load my .env file, generate the files I need, restore the projects and start everything up. All right, so when it stops here, that means that everything is running. And so if you don't have the VS Code extension yet, 
Uh, when we do publish it, I'll put a link in the description. Um, but if you don't have it yet, you are gonna have to go to the dashboard and you can get there by going here. 127001 8000. So I'm just gonna control click that. And this is the tie dashboard. It has all the services that are running, what type it is, the source of it, all of the bindings for that service, number of replicas, restarts, and logs. So if we go here, like let's just go to the Azure function log, we click view, we scroll down, we see that um, it is running. Okay, great. So this is a great way to debug and uh, your service as well, just go right to the logs. So all of this is also in the VS Code extension. So from now on, I'm just gonna use the VS Code extension. We don't have an icon yet, but this list icon here to tie extension, you're gonna be able to see all of your resources here. See Azureite, the ingress dev, the API, the function, the queue service, and the web app are all running. Okay, I can click the dashboard here. That's gonna open up the dashboard. And then what I wanna do is I wanna load the web app. I'm just gonna expand the web app and I'm gonna click on this icon here to open up the browser. And there you have it. The app is loaded just like that. I'm gonna click plus here. It's going to add a meme. It's going to get the uh, extract the text, get the sentiment and then change the border color. So that's what you have to do to get a baseline going for tie run. Yes, it's super simple just to call tie run, but to get all that environment variable replacement stuff happening, that's what I had to go through. Please go and check out the code on GitHub. You'll be able to find what I had to do to work all around that. So please use all my scripts, you know, whatever you need. The next thing I wanna show you is how to use tie debug to debug your microservices. Let's say we have the app running and our border color is not changing right now. It's not changing to red, yellow, or green, and we need to figure out what's going on. So what we want to do is use tie debug to find that bug. So we're in tie and we have called tie run. We're still at the same setting that we were before. So what we're going to do is click on the tie extension and up here, you see this debug icon right up here. We're just going to click that. That's put my VS code instance in debug mode. And now I can go and debug just like any other application. So here, let's go into the queue service here. Um, and I know that I've commented up this line, which is why I have a bug, but let's say you didn't know that and you want to say, set a breakpoint here and then add a message. So I'm going to click plus here and you'll notice that it stopped at the breakpoint. So that's cool. So all I had to do was just go to tie extension and click debug there. So now I'm just going to use my normal tools, my F10, I'm going to step over and I'm going to realize that, oh. I have commented out this line and that is my problem. So I'm going to detach the debugger and I'm just going to uncomment this line. And currently dash dash watch is not working for me, but ideally if we could do a uh, tie watch and it would automatically pick up that change and redeploy, that would be great. In this case, I actually need to detach and then reattach. I'm going to restart time because dash dash watch is not working. So I'm going to click plus again. And the border color has changed. The bug is fixed. So that's how to debug with the VS code extension. Let's look to see how you can do it without the VS code extension. In my tie folder, I have a file called debug sh that calls tie run, but it has a dash dash debug flag with the name of the service that I want to debug. And this exactly matches what's in my tie YAML file. So here tie YAML, we have the queue service. Let's find it right there. That name needs to match. What that's going to tell tie to do is to pause execution until a debugger is attached to that service. Okay. Now let's just call debug like that. Okay, so after it's done loading, you're gonna have to go and find the process ID. Now I have an, an issue submitted to help this process of finding that ID be more smooth. And I'll show you a way to get around this in just a second. But I just wanted to show you this here. So the queue service is running on process ID 314. Okay, now in the debugger, if I go here, if you click down, because I'm in a workspace, I see all of the launch settings for all of the projects in that workspace. So I have this .NET Core attached for the queue service. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to click start debugging. Now here it's going to list all the processes running on my system. If I go here and search for 314, the queue service project pops up. 
I could also just come here and say queue service and run it that way. So you don't actually need to go through the log and find the ID and all that. You can just come here and type in the name of that project. I'm going to select it. Okay, now it's attached to my process, like just like before. I have a debug breakpoint there. I'm going to go back to the UI. I'm going to click plus and it stopped at that breakpoint. So I highly recommend that you use VS Code workspaces. That's just going to give you all of this functionality here so you don't have to open up new instances of VS Code and so on. The next thing that we're going to look at is tie deploy. The tie deploy command will take everything that's in your tie YAML file and generate Kubernetes manifest files from that and deploy it to your Kubernetes cluster. Let's take a look how I did that. So this is the deploy.sh file that's in my project. Same, same couple of lines at the beginning. Next, I'm setting the Kubernetes context using this script. Let's take a quick look at that. That's in scripts, k8sctx. That's in my memeizer folder and then scripts. All that's doing is setting kubectl, config, use context, and that is binding to this environment variable, the kas context. Let's take a look at what that is. In the .env file for that environment that I'm gonna to deploy to, let's say staging, you can see the Kubernetes context is just the base name, which is this, and aks. So it's gonna switch to that context, which I already have locally. Then it's gonna generate the files just like we did before. It's gonna log into my ACR server, and then it's gonna call tie deploy. So when you set dash dash interactive, it's going to do two things. It's going to prompt you for your container registry, which we don't need because we're injecting that through an environment variable. And the second thing it's going to do is ask you if you want to install all the ingress components to your Kubernetes cluster. It's a super convenient way for you to get ingress set up. After all your services are deployed to Kubernetes, I'm going to call this func.sh file, which is going to deploy your Azure function to the app service that you have up on Azure. TIE supports running Azure Functions locally, but not deploying, so you need this extra step. And all that func.sh file does is just CDs to that functions folder and calls this Azure Function App Publish. The next thing I wanna show you is how I'm using TIE in a GitHub action to deploy to my environments anytime a code file is updated on GitHub. So this is standard up here. I'm just monitoring the staging branch for the staging environment. I'm setting some environment variables. The only two things I need to set as secrets on GitHub are the registry password and the Azure credentials. And then I have a bunch of environment variables here. And then I am checking out the code. I'm setting up the .NET version here. Now this is .NET 5. Here, we still need .NET 3 for Ty to install. We have an issue here to get that all fixed up, but for now you just need to install both versions. I then am installing Ty tools here. I'm logging into the ACR. I'm setting up the AKS cluster. I'm calling gen files to do the environment variable replacement, and then I'm just calling Ty deploy. And then I have some steps down here to install the Azure function. All this code is up on GitHub. Please do reuse it. The next thing I want to show you is how I'm doing Blazor WebAssembly standalone application service discovery using Thai Ingress. So the challenging thing here is with a Blazor WebAssembly application, your entire application runs on the client. So you don't have a way to get the API endpoint from a service. You have to put it in the code of your application. Okay, but with Thai Ingress, what you can do is say, anytime I go to request to say slash images, I want to point that to my API project. So remember we were here and we had Ingress and we have this uh, path image points to the API. So now inside of my service client, when I have an API here, I'm just calling slash images. So the service discovery is automatically in place because of Thai Ingress. So super good way to use Thai Ingress. And I've tested this all the way to Azure Kubernetes service and it works great. It does not currently work for Azure Functions. There is an issue on that and it's being worked on, but basically what we wanna be able to do is treat Azure Functions as an external name in Kubernetes. Right now that's not supported. You can hack it, you, there is a way to get it to work, but uh, we're gonna go in depth in that in a different video. So that's all we have for today. I know it's a lot, but I wanted to give you a really good, accurate today's look at what you have to do to use Project Tie in your application. I want you to go to github.com slash johngio slash memealizer. The link will be in the description. Take all of that code, take any of that code to help you use Project Tie today. Get us some feedback at github.com slash dot net slash tie, which I will also link to in the description. And if you like this video and want to see more of this kind of stuff, 
give me a like, give me a sub, turn on your notification bell to let me know that you liked it so that way I can keep creating more of these. Thanks a lot and have a great day.